There is apparently a thin line between a lie and a mistake. Rudy Giuliani, one of Donald Trump's lawyers, is now trying to explain an incorrect statement by the White House as a mistake, a big misunderstanding. But will folks investigating Donald Trump agree? Well, let's put that to the panel. We've got Republican strategist Bruce Haynes, managing director of Sard Verbini and Company. Keith Boykin, CNN political commentator and former Clinton White House aide. Steve Rogers, not Captain America, a member of Donald Trump's campaign advisory board and a former colleague of mine, the award-winning Aaron Gloria Ryan, contributing editor for The Daily Beast. Hello, all. Hey. All right, guys, so we've got Rudy Giuliani last night talking to Chris Cuomo saying that basically the fact that now the White House lawyers are admitting that the president dictated this statement was all a big misunderstanding. It wasn't nefarious at all. Bruce, do you think that's even remotely credible as a Republican coming from this administration? They said it was a mistake themselves. I mean, they're, Rudy Giuliani's purpose right now is to fight the battle of public opinion, mm -hmm. the credibility of the White House. There's just a series of mistakes and confusion. They can't seem to get their facts straight in the same place. Um, they're losing that battle, in my view. Well, and I they've mean, got to straighten it out. It. These are, this is unforced errors, though. I mean, Absolutely. Keith, Keith this, this seems to me it's the three's company's defense. It's all a big misunderstanding. Right. But, <laughs> but they repeatedly said from the White House podium, he did not dictate. The lawyer went on air, said they did not dictate. Any reports to the contrary of fake news. And then suddenly the lawyers say, hey, guess what? He dictated it. Yeah. I, I, it, it, the, the White House has strained credibility for quite some time on this issue, and Rudy Giuliani isn't helping, along with the line that the president can shoot James Comey and, and not be indicted for it, and the president saying he's pardoning himself, he could pardon himself. This is a, a laughable, preposterous situation that even Richard Nixon could not have imagined. Nixon couldn't have pardoned himself. He thought about it, but didn't do his, it. His legal counsel said there wasn't a it's, right to do that. Exactly. But now, Steve, the president is asserting that opinion aside, that he has an absolute right to pardon himself, though also he did nothing wrong. Now, let's just keep those two points in tension and ignore that for a second. Do you think, as a Trump supporter, that the president has an absolute right to pardon himself? And if so, where does it say that in the Constitution? Okay, do I think, yes, based on Article 2, Section 2 of the Constitution, he has the right to pardon in all cases except, except impeachment. impeachment. Now, let's build that out further. However, emoluments clause is there so presidents can't enrich himself from the office. If that was there and the president could pardon himself, they wouldn't have written it in the Constitution. It makes no sense to have somebody sit in judgment on themselves. I would say this, that in the case of Donald Trump, he has no reason to even uh, go there with a pardon. He's done nothing wrong. You're not going to see the president indicted. You're going to see the president uh, pretty much exonerated of all these things that people are speculating about. We haven't seen any evidence whatsoever Steve about collusion. I None. mean, <laughs> but not, not, only, not right. only Steve Nostradamus, but we uh. certainly have seen indictments and charges out of the Mueller probe even to date as it goes forward. Aaron, one point people have pointed to is that, look, Republicans, when it was Ken Starr and Bill Clinton, were saying, Oh, you know, president gets subpoenaed. He absolutely has to be called on the carpet. Rudy Giuliani made that point in 1998. Um, Bill Clinton seems to be coming up a lot in the news. You wrote a blistering hot fire column uh, condemning him for his inability to answer forthrightly a question he's had 25 years to prepare for. Mm -hmm. Did you apologize to Monica Lewinsky? What'd you say? Right. Well, he didn't apologize to Monica Lewinsky. He said that he apologized to the American people. And then he, pl he played this kind of classic uh, uh, poor me card, where first he pointed out that he didn't get off clean. Nobody assumed that he got off clean. Um, and then he said he was in debt when he got out of the White House. And then he said, but what about all the women I hired and didn't harass? Which is such a <laughs> crazy thing to say. And as a woman and as a progressive and as a Democrat, that was really dis disappointing to me because we're trying to align ourselves uh, with women and with women's issues. And if we want to be a party that will stand up for women, then we need to actually take an honest assessment of what Bill Clinton does and doesn't get. And what he doesn't get is that he needs to apologize to Monica Lewinsky. He needs to reach out to her personally. He hasn't done it, and he, he doesn't get it. All right, Aaron Glory Ryan, stick around, panel. You can't quit. You're fired. President Trump disinvites the Super Bowl champions after getting wind of the attendee list. And then he throws the national anthem into the mix. Our panel's back next. <laughs>